Hello, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a 2D platformer in the latest version of Unreal Engine version 5.3. We're going to code everything from complete scratch. And if you want the complete project files for this tutorial, you can find them somewhere in the description of this video for all of my subscribers to my website. And if you're a subscriber, you can access all my courses where I have two full courses on how to make a 2D platformer and a 2D fighting game in Unreal Engine. With that said, let's get started. Hello, to get started, I'm in the Unreal Project Browser, and we're going to be creating our 2D game from a completely blank project. So in the Unreal Project Browser, for the starting template, just select blank, and make sure that we are selected on Blueprints. This allows us to code games in Unreal Engine with no code, and let's just give our project an appropriate name. So I'm just going to call this my Platformer Game, and then go Create. This will load up Unreal Engine. Yours may look a bit different from mine. So I normally like to have the content browser here when I'm working with Unreal Engine. This will allow us to basically access all of our project files inside of our project. If we just go to Content Drawer, then go Dock and Layout, that'll make it so it's permanently there. So the first thing we're gonna do is set up a 2D character that we can play the game as. And we're gonna do that in a new level. So if we just select the content folder, right click and create a new folder, and just call this levels. Then we go over here where it says file and let's just create a new level. So I'll click this button and I'm just going to select the basic map. Then we just want to go and click the save icon and save our level. And I'm just going to save it inside of this levels folder. And we can just save this as the new map. Then the next thing we're going to do is set up a 2D character that we can play this game as. So I'm just going to right click again inside of my content folder and create a new folder. And this time I'm just going to call it sprites. Then if we head inside here and then um, briefly close your Unreal Engine, I will leave a link in the description of this video of the um, 2D asset pack that I'm using, but it's called the Gothivania Patron Collection. And we just want to go over to the Gothic hero files to the PNG folder and just find the Gothic idol gothic jump and gothic run animations and just drag and import them into this folder so this is the character that we're going to set up with all of the images selected so we can just hold shift on our keyboard and set all of the images and it'll select all of them at once we just want to right click and go sprite actions and apply paper to the texture settings this will just make it so all of the images are a lot more clear then the next thing we're going to do is turn these images into animations that we can use for our player. So if we just select the hero idle, right click on it and just go sprite actions and go extract sprites. So Unreal Engine can basically automatically extract the sprites from an image. Sometimes this can be a bit dodgy, it depends on the image. So we can either let Unreal Engine do it or we can go over to grid and we can define how we want Unreal Engine to um, split up the sprite. So I know this because I know the dimensions of this image. So if we just go to the cell width and make this 38, this will basically split up our image uniformly. And this is what we want. We can just go extract. Then if you select all four of these sprites and hold shift to select them all at the same time, then right click on one of them and go create flipbook. And we can just call this the hero idol. And that will just put all of these sprites into a flipbook, which will play an animation. Nice. So we can change the speed of this by playing with the frames per second. If I make this something like three, then it's going to be a lot slower. And if I make this something like 20, it's going to be a lot faster. So you can just play around with that. I think I'll just make mine eight. And we can just save and close this. Then we want to set up the other um, animations so i'm just going to go over to my hero's running image right click and go sprite actions and extract sprites change this to be grid and then in the cell width the way i basically like to calculate how to um get the exact right number is i normally just count how many um animations there are so in this one there are 12 then i just do 792 divided by 12 and then that is 66 and then that will split up the image perfectly for me. I'll just extract this 
and then I'll select all of the running sprites, right click and go create flipbook and we can just call this our hero run. I'm happy with that speed and then finally if we just go over to the jumping one, right click and go sprite actions, extract sprites, I'll change this to be grid and then for the cell width if we just do 305 divided by 5 which is 61 and then I'll just extract this. For the jumping one we can just delete on the jump sprite zero we won't need it and then just select the first three um, sprites right click and go create flipbook and call this jump up so we'll play this animation when our character is jumping up I'm gonna make the frames of this um, three actually let's make it eight and then if we just find the last jumping sprite so it'll be called jump sprite four right click and just go create flipbook and just call this jump down so when our character is falling down we'll make them play this animation okay with this we've set up the animations for our character the next thing we're going to do is set up a 2d player character which we can play the game as if we just go to the content folder right click and create a new folder and just call this blueprints head inside here then we just want to right click again and go blueprint class then we just want to go to all classes and look for paper character and we want this one paper character and just go select and just call this our platformer character underscore blueprint and then just open them up and go over to sprite and then for the source flipbook select the hero idle sprite that we just made now it's kind of small relative to the size of its capsule this is its collision so if we just select the sprite then click this anchor icon we can scale up the size of our sprite so if i make this three that'll make the sprite a lot bigger so i'm just going to make it 3.5 and then we can also just select the capsule and play with the um, half height and the radius to just make it fit around our character we can also just um, select the sprite and kind of just move them so they fit inside this capsule so i'm just going to make my capsule a bit smaller i think and i'll just move my character up a bit you may notice when you're moving your character it may not move exactly how you want to we can go here where it says um grid and if i change this to be one then i'm gonna have a lot more precision when i'm moving my character so this just makes it a bit easier to place our character inside of um its capsule the next thing we want to do is just select our sprite and then just go add and look for a spring arm so we're going to attach a camera to the spring arm and this is going to be how we see our player character with the spring arm selected just go over here where it says select and rotate objects and rotate it 90 degrees so we want it to be minus 90 then select the spring arm and go add and look for a camera and just select it and that will add the camera to our spring arm we also just want to rotate this camera 90 degrees that way it's facing our player character and now if I select the spring arm if I just increase the target arm length because the camera is attached to it it'll move backwards so we can just make this 588 for now let's just compile it and let's just make it so we start the game off as this um, platformer character to do that we're going to need to create a game mode so to do that we can just right click and just go blueprint class then we just want to go game mode base and just call it 2D game mode. So the game mode basically helps us to find the starting settings for our game. If we just open this up, we want to go over to default pawn class and change this to be our platform or character blueprint that we just made. This will make it so that if we use this game mode, we're going to start the game off as the platform or character. We can just compile this and close it. Then we just want to go over to window and select world settings. This allows us to define the game mode for this level and we just want to drag the 2D game mode onto here. So in this level, you'll notice there's this thing called the player start. This is where the player starts in our game. If I just click the play button, we're going to start off the game as our character. Nice. Although you may notice one thing, we can't actually move or control our character. So the next thing we need to do is set up input so we can actually move and control our player. 
So to do that, if we just go over to the content folder, right click and create a new folder and just call this input. To quickly rename a folder, we can also just press F2 and that allows us to quickly rename it. So I'm just gonna call this input. Then if we head inside here, we just want to right click and go to input and just select input mapping context and just call this the platformer underscore input mapping context. This is gonna be where we have all of the controls for our 2D character. Next, we just wanna right click and go input and select input action and just call this input action underscore move. Open this up and change the value type to be an axis 1D flow. You'll see what this does in a second. Then we just wanna right click again and go input, select input action and just call this input action underscore jump. For this one, we don't need to change anything. Next, head over to the platformer input mapping context. This is gonna be where we have all of the controls for our game and just go add new mapping and just select the input action move. In order for my player to move around, I'm gonna make them use the left and the right arrow keys. So to do this, we can just click this add control binding, click this arrow here. And then for this first one, look for the left key. So when the player presses the left button, it's going to enable them to perform the move input action. Just click this arrow and we just want to add a modifier which is going to be a negate. This will basically make this a negative value. You'll kind of see what this does in just a second. Next we want to go over here and just look for right and we can just leave this blank. So the player can press either the left or the right button to move and for this left one we've added this negate modifier which will make the value of this negative. Next we want to add another mapping this time for jumping and I'm going to make it so the player has to press the up button on their keyboard or the spacebar button on their keyboard in order to jump. So I'm just going to add another control binding and for this one I'm just going to make it spacebar. Next we can save this and we just want to go back to our blueprints and to the platformer character and we just need to make it so the platformer character is using the controls that we just set up. To do this we want to go over to the event graph. This is where we basically code most of the logic for our character. Event begin play, so this will happen as soon as our character is loaded up and is running in our game. We're going to give them access to the controls that we set up. To do this, we can just right click and look for get controller. Then we just want to drag up here and cast to the player controller. From here, we can drag off and look for get enhanced input local player subsystem. We just want to drag off here and look for is valid. So what we're doing here is just checking that we have a valid controller for our player character. If we do, then we just want to drag off here and look for add mapping context. And we just want to add the platformer input mapping context. This will add the platformer controls that we just set up. We can compile this. And then if we just right click and look for input action underscore move. So the input action move that we just set up. Because when we set up this input action move, we made this value type axis 1D, you'll notice this has a value here. If I just drag off this triggered and look for print string and then connect this into here and just go compile and I play my game. Because we added that negate modifier to the left button, when I press the left arrow key, it should print negative one. So when we press this button, we're gonna make our player move towards the left. And when I press the right button, it should just print one. Okay, nice. So that's the reason we changed this. So when the player presses the um, left or the right arrow key, this triggered button is gonna fire. And we just wanna drag off here and look for add movement input. And just connect this action value into here. And for the world direction, in 2D games in Unreal Engine, 2D characters normally move in the x-axis, so if I just go here where it says select and translate objects and I just select this red um, arrow, you'll notice my player is moving in the x-axis. I'm just going to move them back to their starting location by pressing Control z to undo what I did. So if I go to the event graph or the world direction, just put a value of 1 and now if I go compile and I play my game, when I press the left arrow key I should move towards the left. And when I press the right arrow key, I should move towards the right. Nice. Next, let's make it so our player can jump. 
So I'm just going to right click again and look for input action jump. This time we want to click this um, arrow. This will expand it because when the player presses the um, jump button, this trigger node is going to constantly fire for however long we are holding the jump button. And we just want to make it so when the player taps the jump button, they jump once. So whenever we tap a key, this started node is going to fire. So we just want to drag off started and look for jump. And then when we um, let go of a key, this completed node is going to fire. And for this, we just want to drag off and look for stop jumping. And this will make it so our character stops jumping. So if I just compile this, and I now go play. When I press the space bar button, my player character can jump. To change our player character's um, jumping settings, we can go over to character movement. And in the details, if I look for jump, we can see right now the jump Z velocity is 420. If I make this something higher, like 600, that's going to mean my player character jumps a lot higher. You may notice when the player is jumping, they don't really have that much control when they're in the air. To change that, we can just go back to our platformer character and then you can see air control. Right now it's set to 0.015. The closer this is to 1, the more control my player is going to have when they're in the air. So if I make this 1 and then compile this and play my game, my player is going to have a lot more control when they're in the air. We can also make it so the player can jump multiple times. Right now the player can only um, jump once. If I just select my platformer character, right now we can see the jump max count is 1. If I change this to be 3, that will mean my player character can jump 3 times. If I now press the play button, my player character can jump 3 times. And then one more jump setting I'm going to tell you about is the jump max hold time. Right now this is set to 0, but if I change this to be 1, for as long as I'm holding the jump button for 1 second, my player character is going to continue to jump. So if I click play, and then I just hold the space bar button, for 1 second my player character is going to continue to jump. So that's what the jump max hold time is for. But I'm just going to change mine back to be um, 0. But you can play around with that. And I'll also make my jump max count just 1. And I'm just going to change this to 500. The next thing we're going to do is set up our player character's animations. Right now, when we um, play the game, we want to make it so when the player is moving or jumping, they actually play the correct animation. So to do this, if we go back to our platformer character, find some free space and just right click and look for event tick. So the way the event tick node will run is every single frame is going to fire this. So every single frame we're going to update our player character's animation. If we just drag in the character movement, drag off here and look for get velocity, drag off here and look for vector length and just drag off here and look for greater than and this will basically tell us the um, speed of our player character and if it's ever greater than zero that means our player character is moving and so we want them to play their um, running animation so I'm just gonna click B on my keyboard and left click that will allow me to quickly create a branch and if this condition is true we're gonna make our player play their running animation so I'm gonna drag in my sprite drag off here and look for set flipbook and just change this to be the hero run and connect from true into here if this is false and my player character speed is um, less than zero that must mean my player character is doing that idle animation so I'm just going to copy this connect from false into here and change this to be the hero idle and now if I go compile and I play my game when I'm running my player character does that Sorry, when I'm moving, my player character does their um, running animation. Nice. So the next thing we're going to do is set up our player character's jumping animation. If we open up the player character, the event tick, before we check if our character is moving, we're going to check to see if they're falling. So I'm just going to add another branch by holding B on my keyboard and left clicking. And the condition for this branch is going to be to see if my player character is falling in the air. To check this, we can drag in the character movement track off here and up for is falling. This will let us know if our character is in the air. If this is true, that means our character is in the air and we'll play a jumping animation. If this is false though, then we're just going to do whatever is here. So when our player character is falling in the air, we need to check if they're falling up or falling down. Depending on that will depend on the animation that we play. So to check this, we can just right click and up for get velocity. 
this is also another way of just checking our character's velocity. And if I just drag off here and up for break vector, we can see our player character's velocity in the x, y, and z. When our player character is jumping, they're only going to be moving in the z-axis, so we need to check if they're moving up or down in the z-axis. So if I just drag off here, if this is greater than zero, that basically means my player character is moving up in the z-axis, and so we want to play the jumping up animation. So I'm going to add another branch, connect this into the condition, and then I'll just copy this. So if this is true, we'll play the jumping up sprite, and if this is false, I'll just paste this, we'll play the jumping down sprite. So let's compile and test this out. So if I go play, we can see when I'm jumping up, it plays the jumping up animation, and when I'm falling down, it plays the jumping down animation. The jumping up animation looks a bit um, weird, so I'm just going to go back to it. And I think I may actually just remove frames 1 and 2. So if I just select frame 2, I can right click on it and go delete to remove it. I can right click on frame 1 and go delete to remove it. So now if I just go play, I can jump up and down. And I think that looks a bit better. The next thing we need to do is fix our player character's rotation. When I try and move towards the left, my player character doesn't turn to face this direction. So it looks a bit weird. So, to do this, if we open up our platformer character, and when our player character um, starts moving, we're also going to make them face the correct direction. So, to do this, we can just drag in our sprite, drag off here, and look for set world rotation. Just copy this and paste it again. So, we're either going to make our player face towards the right or the left. When our player character is moving forwards, we're going to make them face towards the right. In order to do that, we can just drag off this action value and check to see that this is greater than zero. If that's true, that means my player character must be holding the right button, and so we're going to make them face the right direction. We can drag off here and add a branch, and just connect true into here. If I just go to the viewport and select my sprite, right now we can see they have a rotation of zero in the z-axis, so we want this to be zero here. When our player character is facing towards the left, we want this value to be minus 180. This makes our player character face the opposite direction. And uh, whoops, it looks like I've made a mistake because the spring arm also moves with the sprite. So if we just change this back to be zero, then select the spring arm and drag it on top of the sprite, and that will make it so it's not attached to our sprite. Okay, so if I select the sprite and we change this to be 180, then my player faces the opposite direction. So if I go back to the event graph, if this is false, then we're going to make the Z value here 180. And now if I go compile, and I go play, if I move towards the left, my player character rotates towards the left, and is now facing the correct direction. Nice. So with this, we've made it so our player character has animations, and can move, and rotates to face the correct direction. So the next thing we're going to do is set up some tower maps. We can use this to design 2D levels inside of Unreal Engine. So if we just go to our content folder, I'm going to right click and create a new folder. And I'm just going to call this tile maps. Then if I head inside here, I'm going to briefly close Unreal Engine again. And we just want to find the original pack that we're using, the Gothavania Patreon collection, and find the old Dark Castle tile set files. Go to the PNG folder and just select these first two images and drag them inside this folder. Right click on both of them and go sprite actions and apply paper to the texture settings to make them a bit clearer. Then to use these as tile maps, which will basically allow us to design a 2D level based off them, we can just select this first one, right click and go sprite actions and go create tile set. Open this up and for this one, we don't need to change anything. Although just change the tile size to be 16 by 16. You'll see what this does in just a second. We can save this. And then we want to do the same for this. Right click and go sprite actions and go create tile set. Open this up and I click somewhere. You're going to notice I have this large square. This basically represents areas which I can basically give collision. Normally most 2D tile sets have a tile size of 16 by 16. That's why I just changed this to be 16 by 16. It's important that both of these match because when we design our tile map, if they're not the same size, 
then some things can look a bit off. So with the um, tile map, we can make it so certain tiles have collision. So if I just go here and I select this cube, I can go add box and this will basically give this box some collision. Right now that fits perfectly, but if I select the square above it and then I go add box, we can see the collision is a bit bigger than this. So if I just select this um, first line here, I can move and adjust it. To get more precision, we can go here and change the grid um, step size. So I've made mine 5, but I think the default value is 10, so it moves in increments of 10. So you may need to just play around with that. And then for more complex um, angles, we can select and then go to add polygon. And if I just select somewhere, I can specifically design the collision that I want this to have. When you're done with um, your thing, you can just press enter and that will save it. Or you can just click and then when you have your final point, just double click. And then to delete it, we can just select this and just press the delete button and that will remove it. Same with this, we can just select it and then if I select everything and press the delete button, that will remove everything. And if I just click this colliding tiles, this will basically show me all of the tiles that have given collision. So we can see them highlighted in blue here. So I'm just going to save this. And now that we know this, we can design a tile map for our 2D character. So I'm just going to uh, right click on this and go create tile map. We can just call this our castle tile map. And if we open this up, just go here and change this to be the old castle, um, the old dark castle. I'll go over the main ways that we can design a tile map. So we have this paint tool. If I select a specific tile, then go here, I can paint it on here. We have this eraser tool. So this allows me to erase um, tiles. Then we have this fill tool. So if I just select something, then press the fill button, then select here, it will fill this whole area. So those are the main tools that we can use to design a 2D map. So we can also change the size of this. So I think last time I made this 60 by 11. Whoops, so 60 width and then a map height, sorry, a map height of 19. And if we just go back to paint and select everything, we can just um, paste this all here, just like that. And then just rename this layer to be the castle. Then what we can do is add another layer on top of this. So I'm just gonna click add new layer and this is going to be our layer where we have the platforms so i'm just going to rename this platforms then if i go here i can change this to be the old dark castle interior tile set and i'm going to add some stairways so i'm just going to paint this here i'll paint this here i'll paint this here I will paint this here and I'm just going to add some stairs. So I'm just going to quickly do that. And then one more thing with layers, we can kind of use it to design our map. So right now, if I try and place this door on my current platforms layer, it will kind of like erase everything I've pasted. However, if I go to my castle layer, then at the store, it's going to place it behind it. So we can use things like that to help us design our level. So I'm happy with this. We can just um, save this. And then I'm going to quickly add some collision to all of the tiles that I basically placed. If I just drag um, the castle tile map somewhere into my level, it's kind of small. So I'm just going to go to details and with the scale anchor checked, if I make this five, it'll make it a lot bigger. Maybe five was a bit too big, so I'll make it 3.5 actually. Then if I go to details, this is on layer 79 in the um, Y axis. So I'm just gonna move my player start to also be on this layer, layer um, minus 79. Then I move my character up a bit and click the play button. My player character will basically start on our tile map. You may notice the lighting has gone a bit weird so I want to show you some tips and tricks on some settings that work well with 2D games.
So the reason this brightness is happening is because of a setting in Unreal Engine called Auto Exposure, which kind of adjusts the lighting. To turn this off, if we just go to Edit, Project Settings, then in the search, look for Auto Exposure, and just leave this unchecked. And now if I click the play button, the lighting should be a bit more normal. If we go over to our player character and select the camera, go to search and look for brightness. Just check this max EV and this um, min EV. And I've changed both of these values to be um, one. The higher we make this, the darker the game gets and the lighter we make this, the brighter the game gets. So I've put mine to one and that looks um, pretty all right. But let's say I change this to be something like 4 and 4, then my game will look um, a bit darker. So you can play around with that to adjust the brightness. And then one more thing, when working with 2D games, it can be helpful to view things in unlit mode. So this is where there is no lighting. Okay, and that's how to create a 2D platformer game inside of Unreal Engine in 2024. If you want to learn how to create even more 2D games in Unreal Engine, I have this course on how to make a 2D fighting game in Unreal Engine. I also have this course on how to make a 2D platformer game inside of Unreal Engine. Make sure to check out my courses. And if you subscribe right now, you can get access to all of my courses. That's all. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.